Hi everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today we're gonna have a real genuine treat. We're gonna meet Vanna May. Hi everyone. Welcome to the channel, Vanna. Thanks for having me. And uh, so uh, you're in a night, really nice class C. Yes. How long have you been on the road? I've been on the road for two years. So you're not a newbie at all. This You've gotten pretty comfortable with it. Yeah. And I hear, I don't know if you, the audience at home can hear it. I hear a voice coming from inside. <laughs> yes, that's my cat, Indigo. I've had her for seven years, and I took her on the road with me, and she's a great travel companion. She's leash trained, so I can take her on walks. She has a cat backpack, and yeah, she loves it. She's very talkative, so you might hear her throughout yes. <laughs> <laughs> this video. <laughs> but that's great. <laughs> mm-hmm. So uh, after two years of being on the road, what, what motivated you to start out on the road? Yeah, so back in 2015, I was going through a big transition in my life. I was living the American dream. I had a house that I owned. I had a dream career. I was in a long-term relationship. And unfortunately, that long-term relationship turned very toxic and it became a domestic violence situation that I had to leave. Um, after that happened, I was starting over again by myself and I fell into a deep depression. I didn't even recognize myself in the mirror and I knew that's when I needed help. And so I reached out to my family and friends and let them know what was going on. And even though it's scary to ask for help, that vulnerability is so important because it helped me find my voice and speak it out loud and not hold it in. And so um, one of those people was my mom who as all moms do, they know what to do. And she bought me a watercolor set. And at first I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't think I'm gonna paint. And so I, I thanked her for the watercolor set. My parents live on the East Coast. I was living on the West. So I took it back with me and I kind of put it in the closet. And around that time was, I was starting my healing journey and I was listening a lot to what people were saying, like their advice. And uh, one of those was to solo hike. And so to make new memories with, that I used to have with my ex, because me and him would go hiking a lot and for a while it's avoiding that. And so I started hiking again and I started gaining a lot of confidence. Another advice that really helped me was from the suicide prevention hotline, which I did call a couple times. And there was a gentleman, wherever you are in the world, thank you. He would remind me like, take five minutes out of your day to do something for yourself that you love. And so that's when I pulled out the watercolor set again. At first I thought I was going to paint something sad, but instead I painted a girl drinking tea in her room and like those moments alone painting really helped me be present with myself, start to love myself again. And that was like my me time. So from there, the, that painting grew into several other paintings. And so I was painting for myself pretty much. And uh, I had this series and my friends saw my artwork and they're like, oh, you should showcase your work. And I'm like, oh, okay so I did and my first two paintings sold and that's when I had this like calling this feeling like I want to see where this goes I want to continue so I started painting live at events and selling like my prints and it was just something fun to do and to tell my story and from there I, I realized like I really enjoy traveling I enjoy creating art and that's when I started thinking about how can I do this all the time and um, that's when it kind of clicked. I want to be on the road. And that's when I found your channel, Bob. And your philosophy really helped me through that time of like trying to figure out where I want to go and how I want to do this. And one of your videos, you had a woman that had this RV, an older version. And I'm like, okay, that's my dream RV. So from like 2015 until January 20th, 2020, that's when I started the process of going into the RV life. And now I feel like I'm living my paintings. And I just am so grateful every day to be doing this, along with my cat, who I least trained a year before. And she loves it too. She sits in the window when I'm driving, looks outside. She, she enjoys it as much as I do. And um, yeah, I sacrificed a lot. I gave up a lot of things. I sold my house in order to afford this. And I'm really grateful for it. I don't regret that. What I heard there was that you were living the American dream. And for most of us, the American dream crushes our own personal dream and our authentic self. And you almost had to have a crushing of that so you had, could turn to your real dream. And you didn't even know what it was. Yeah. You couldn't. I didn't know. I didn't know what that would look like. Everything seemed very dark, but there's always like that light at the end of the tunnel. And I'm really grateful I followed that light. Those little pieces of advice I was getting, 
taking time for myself, like doing simple things like painting my nails or looking outside a window and just reminding myself, what is my dream? What is it that I want to see in my life? I feel like I'm 100% myself now. I'm listening to my intuition, which I feel like in life, when you're just like running the rat race, you kind of forget yes. yourself and you put yourself on the back burner. And for so long I was doing that and not living my authentic truth. And so once I started turning towards that, even though it was scary, I was like, wow, I'm really happy. And I'm not trying to please everybody. Like you can't love others unless you love yourself. Even though like, and I'm grateful for the career I was in, I was living my dream job, but I was working 40 to 60 hours a week. And then I would burn out all the time. And I just felt like, is, is this what life is? Like I would come home after work and just start crying. Oh yeah. And it's like, that's not how I should live. That's right. not how, you know, I don't think this is it. And just asking myself why. And also um, another thing that helped me was writing the things that I wanted to see in my life, even though I didn't know how it would come, like writing down like my year plan or five year plan or like I'm a planner. I love planning. So but like for me, just like imagining what that would look like, making vision boards, stuff like that to just kind of stimulate my mind when I wasn't in a when I wasn't ready to do this yet really helped me like see that happen. So you, you knew you uh, discovered that, that the art was healing for you and that travel, the, the two go together for you? Mm -hmm. Hand in hand, I think. Just being able to see new sceneries and to kind of paint how I'm feeling in the moment is really, it's just exciting. And I've created my space so that it's, it's literally, it's a home to me. I, this is a home. It's not an RV to me anymore. It's a home. And I think creating your space to be beautiful also helps too. And how are you supporting yourself on the road? So I do multiple sources of income. I think nowadays that's just how life is. So my art is one way. I sell online, I sell at events. I also uh, write and make content for RVshare.com, which has been really fun because I'm writing about my RV experience. I also have my YouTube channel. And wherever I am, I find opportunities. So like my dream, well, my dream job, I was a professional art model for 11 years, um, which means I was um, posing for painting and drawing classes for art schools, colleges and all that. So um, I do that every now and then, not as much as I did before. Um, I was working on a farm for 11 months. Just, I am just very open. I'm living way below my means. And I think that also helps too. Yes, very important. You know, I cook at home all the time. So I will say put in a place for months at a time before I go to my next journey, make sure that I have enough money saved up to go. Um, the way that I travel sometimes is I use Harvest Host and I find that to be the safest way to travel to maybe places I don't know. But I've been in places where, yeah, there might've been people that think a lot differently from me, but what I found is there's a common thread throughout this country of people. We all want the same things. We want happiness. We want connection. And so when I travel, I, I go with that mindset, you know, I mean, things can happen. I've met mean people on the road, but I don't let that get to me and I follow my instincts. So if I feel like this place ain't safe, right. I go. And also I, I know self-defense. I think that's also really important. Very important. But again, I've traveled cross country twice. I haven't had, a, I think online makes it seem a lot more scary than it actually I is. Yeah. <laughs> That's just my opinion. So uh, would you like to show us around, Vanna? Sure. Let's do that. Yeah. So Vanna, tell us all about your RV. It's uh, unique. Yes, this is a Thor Majestic 19 GRV. She's 19 feet. I bought her from Cruise America and uh she was an rv rental and every four years they resell their rentals and i got her for 40k yeah she's a 2016. so it's real new and real uh new. how many miles did it have now when i bought it, it was 127 and uh now it's 144. and often you can buy an ex a long warranty on these mm -hmm. So it would have been 35K if I would have not got the warranties, but I did get the powertrain and cab warranty with it. And how long is that for? For four years. So getting a rig for that price with a four-year warranty is really a good deal. Really good. And I did pay 
for this by selling my house. Just wanted to say. Right. So I own it outright. Wow, that's sweet. Yeah. That is really sweet. And the, the it must be really maneuverable being so short. It's like driving a truck. It's very easy to turn around if I get in a tight spot. And one of the most unique things is it has single rear wheels. Mm-hmm. That was a big selling point for me. It makes it easy to change the tires. It's way cheaper than having a dually on the back. And yeah, I I love it, honestly. So can we go inside and take a look around? Yeah, sure. Let's do that. So this is my home. This is my cat, Indigo. She's really sweet. So this is my front area. I have my bedroom up here. This is a queen size bed. Um, it fits two of us perfectly. My cat Indigo's up here. <laughs> the one thing I really like about my rig is I can go from my bed to my driver's seat. So my driver's seat's here. I have a small e-bike. Mm -hmm. I bought this size e-bike because it fits perfectly here and it can go in my wet bath. And over here, I this was the only big modification I did. This is Indigo's litter box. So she has a door here. Mm -hmm. And then I can open up here and... I can change her litter box. All of her stuff is here. And then this is also a seat. Uh-huh, yeah. And then here, so this is separate from this. I have my art supplies here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then here I have like my little bookshelf. I have plenty of storage up here. And over here is my couch. So this is actually a dinette, but I have it in this uh, way right now. Um, when I have it like this, I use this as my work desk. Mm -hmm. I also have another little like a uh, TV tray that I use. And then underneath this, so I have storage here now, but I have my table here. Mm -hmm. So I can put the table up and then have a place to sit here too. But for now, I have it like this. And so this is your bed, your primarily? My, no, you sleep off. I sleep here. This is just my couch and hangout spot. Right. And then I'll use this to work if I want to. I also have tables here so I can like sit and work here. These curtains are pillowcases and bed sheets. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. <laughs> very, very simple, very cheap. Yeah. And then this is a scarf. And yeah, it's just a lot. The only real, big purchase I made was this. This is my, um, the Jackery is what I use for my power. Mm -hmm. I made my home to be boondock ready and I mostly boondock. And so this is what I pretty much use for everything. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. do you have solar on the roof or you just put a panel outside? Not yet. Yeah. I just put this panel outside. Mm -hmm. So over here is my kitchen area. I have a fridge here, a Dometic fridge that has like a little freezer. And then that's one of my original watercolors. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Thanks. Over here, this is my closet. And it's just, there's a lot of clothes because it's winter. But yeah, I have all my clothes here. I have all my jewelry here. So it's all just tucked away in one spot. And then, yeah, then this is my kitchen. I have a two burner stove. I have a deep sink here. And this, I recommend... <laughs> everyone getting so this is my rice cooker i've made cakes in this i've reheated food in this this is only 180 watts it's perfect and convenient and i just use my jackery with it and then i have a mini toaster oven too and that's i think 550 watts and so if i want to bake something i i actually bake in here more than this but is yeah. that 110 volt or 12 volt 12 volt it is 12 volt yes yeah, volt. Volt. so did you get it in a truck stop no, I got it on Amazon. Amazon. Okay. Yeah. So here I have my hamper and then I have um, a composting toilet here. Oh, good. Yeah. This was this is a game changer because I can now camp for a longer period of time. Um, so I don't use my black tank at all. Yeah, I just wash up in here um, and then I have like my toilet or my this uh, toilet paper here. And I have all of my things here. This is like my toiletry bag. 
I also use the spray bottle method. So I have like soap and water in one, and then I have water and uh, white vinegar in the other, and I just wash my dishes that way. So over here, I have my spice rack, and these are magnetic. I got this on Amazon. I've taken this down bumpy roads. They never fall. That's a great idea. This is awesome. So um, up here, I have all my herbs and spices in uh, mason jars. Uh, so they're not smelly because I've had um, an unwanted visitor. I had a rat in here. <laughs> and so when that happened, I learned very quickly that having plastics in your in your kitchen area if you have an rv is not very good you want to seal up all these smells so how i keep warm at night is i use water bottles oh wow so this is this long one this is nice because it's like a full body one so i just warm this up there's like a knob here and you just put the water in the hot in the pot and you heat them up and then you can put them on i put it underneath my bed at night and I'm toasty in low temperatures. Like yesterday, it was like 40 degrees. Mm -hmm. And I was nice and warm. It was probably like 70 degrees up here. Well, Vanna, thank you so much for sharing your home and your life with us. It's just, uh, you're a real inspiration. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bob. You're an inspiration to me too. So it's been an honor to have you in my home. Thank you. So folks, I'm sure you've got just wonderful ideas here from Vanna and her wonderful little RV. And if you did, uh, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later.